Question number 17. So question number 17 wants you to evaluate the exponential function for the question listed below. All right. So it tells us write and evaluate an exponential function at a given value. But what if you were not told that it represents an exponential function? Could you figure out what that exponential or if it's talking about an exponential function? All right. So let's actually try to figure it out. So it says a town has a population of 2,000 and grows at 4.5% every year. What would be the population after 13 years to the nearest whole number? All right. Any time that you have some starting amount, all right, that's either growing or decaying, increasing or decreasing, appreciating or depreciating, or just changing at some percentage over some period of time, that's how you know it represents an exponential function, all right? An exponential function can be broken up into two types of function, whether a growth function or a decay function. But I'm going to show you a general way to understand both of them, okay? So the general form for all exponential functions is y equal a parentheses r to the exponent t. So y equal r, all right? Where y represents your total, a represents your initial value, r represents your rate of change or rate, and t represents time, all right? So when we read this question, we need to try to identify what would be the initial value, what would be the rate, and what would be the time, okay? So the easiest thing to identify is your time, all right? So it says, what is the population or what will the population be after 13 years? This 13 years represents the time in which we're trying to evaluate our function for, all right? So that represents time, okay? The next easiest thing to identify is your initial, all right? So your initial is the amount that you're starting with before you start to change, all right? So it says a town has a population of 2,000. That 2,000 is the amount the population was before we started to grow, all right? So this 2,000 represents your initial or your starting amount, all right? So that goes on the line in front of my parentheses, okay? Now we need to calculate or rather find our rate. Our rate is the only thing that you have to calculate, all right? So to calculate that rate, we need to first evaluate the fact that it says it's growing at 4.5%, uh, 4 all right? Growing would mean that you're doing what? What do you think? Add or subtract? it would mean that I'm adding. So I'm adding the 4.5, okay? However, what am I adding it to? Because again, growth means I add. What am I adding it to, however? Yes, you can add it to one, but I'm actually gonna add it to 100, all right? It's the same thing like adding it to one, but I prefer to add it to 100, okay? So 100 plus 4.5, will give me 104.5, all right? However, this is a percentage, all right? And we don't want percentages when we're talking about rate. When we're talking about rate, I need decimals. So what do I need? Decimals, all right? So you can divide this by 100, but I'm going to show you how to, how to convert this to a decimal without a calculator. So you see the point that's right here, guys? To turn it into a decimal, you move it two times to the left like Beyonce, all right? So when she said to the left, to the left, she was talking about rounding, all right? So 104.5 is 1.045. I move the point two times to the left, okay? And that's what goes inside of the parentheses, okay? So again, guys, just like that. So all I got to do now is just put this in my calculator. So in my calculator, I will type everything from the 2,000 
all the way to the exponent, which is 13, you do not type the Y, all right? So when I plug that in my calculator, guys, I ended up getting 3,544.392, all right? Always write up to about three numbers after the decimal point, okay? Now we're going to round. Okay, so again, now we're going to round, okay? When you're rounding, guys, all right, um, we need to figure out what the question, how the question wants us to round. So it says round to the nearest whole number. So I'm looking at numbers after the point, all right? So when it says whole number, you look at the first number after the decimal point. If that number is five or larger, everything to the left will go up by one point. Because it is not 5 or larger, everything to the left of what I underline is the result. So my answer would be 3,544. Alright? So again, guys, that is my answer rounded to the nearest whole number. Alright? So again, if you want to figure out how to round, say you had a number. So as an example, say you had 6.5. Three, five, nine. All right. Nearest whole number. You look at this one. Okay. So again, you look at this for nearest whole. Okay. So if I was rounding this to the nearest whole, whole number would just be, because again, this would not round up. So this would just be six. If I'm doing nearest tenth, I look at the second number after the decimal point. So again, that's if I was doing nearest tenth, all right? Because this is five or larger, the three will go up to a four, all right? So nearest tenth would be 6.4. And nearest cent, all right? You look at the third number after the decimal point. So again, this one you look for cent, okay? And if that number is five or larger, the number to the left will go up by one point because it is it will be 6.36, all right? The 5 will go up by 1 point, all right? So again, guys, that's how you route. So let's do the next one. So the next one says a new car is purchased for 20300 The value of the car depreciates at 9.5% per year. What would be the value of the car, or what would the value of the car be to the nearest cent after 11 years of ownership, all right? So again, guys, whenever you see some amount, all right, that's either depreciating or appreciating, growing or decaying, increasing or decreasing, by some percentage over some period of time, you know you need to use the general form, Y equal A R T, because it's exponential. We know that Y represents the total, a is your initial or your starting or original or flat value. R is your rate. And T is your y-intercept. All right? So what we are going to do is that we're going to write some equation, y equal some initial value, some rate over some period of time. All right? So the easiest thing to identify is your time. What do you think represents your time? Yup, the 11 years, because that's the amount of time we're evaluating or for our um, car depreciating for, all right? So that represents time. What do you think represents initial? Yup, your initial is the 20300 because that's the amount you bought the car for before it started to depreciate. So again, this will be the initial or the starting cost, okay? So again, that's what we started with, all right? Now we're going to calculate our rate, okay? So to calculate our rate, it says that the car depreciates at 9.5%, okay? Depreciate means that you subtract, all right? Because depreciate would kind of mean that you're decaying, so it means you're going to subtract, okay? This time, I am going to subtract by 1, all right, just to show you what that would look like, all right? So normally, I subtract by 100, okay? But this time, I'm going to subtract by 1, okay? Again, I could just do what I normally do, guys. 
Subtract by 100, all right? The 100 minus 9.5, get 90.5, all right? Then move the point two times to the left to get 0 0.905, okay? However, for this one, guys, I'm going to actually do it like this way, okay? So if you do it like this, guys, you have to move the decimal point first, okay? So, because I can't do 1 minus 9.5. I can't take away more than what I have. This would end up being a negative number. So, I would move this 1, 2 times to the left. All right. And you see how we have an open space right here? I'm going to put 0 as a placeholder. All right. So, this would be 1 minus 0 0.095. Okay. And yes, I can put a zero in front of that point if I would like. One minus zero point zero nine five is zero point nine zero five. All right, which would have been the same thing if I just did it the regular way that we're used to. All right, but again, you need to can be able to evaluate that this is the same thing as what I did here. All right, you need to can know that this is the same as what I'm doing here. All right. So again, guys, inside of here, I'll put that 0 0.905. Now I'm going to just put all this in my calculator. Again, you put everything except the y equal. So I'll put the 20,300, parentheses, 0 0.905, parentheses, to the exponent 11. When you put that in your calculator, you would get 6,770. Point six five zero. All right. So the question says that we need to round. All right. So I need to round this to the nearest cent. Cent. I will look at which number. The third number after the point. All right. That's the one that I look for. Cent. All right. So when I look at the third number after the decimal point, I see that's a zero. It is not five or larger. So will this round up? No. Everything in front of what I underline would be my answer, right? So everything in front of what I underline stays the same, and that's my answer, all right? So again, guys, just like that.